Hello everyone. Uh, happy October. And as you know, October is Abuse Awareness Month. And most of the people that are on this channel um, have either been in an abusive relationship, are in an abusive relationship, or know somebody in an abusive relationship. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do like frequently asked questions. And I do have a big video coming out hopefully by the end of the month. Um, so let's just hop into it and answer some questions. First question, are you okay? Are you safe? Yes, I am okay. I'm safe. I'm sorry I haven't posted in a while. Uh, you know, life's just kind of been keeping me a little busy. Um, you know, things have changed a lot from when I first started this channel. And yeah, so sorry about that. But I'm good. We're good. We're awesome. Moving on. <clears throat> Does he know where you are? Um, I believe he knows which side of the country I'm on. I'll give him that. But no, he does not know where we live. Was he like that all the time? No, he was wonderful and great and a good dad half the time. But unfortunately, it's not about the good times. It's about the bad and how they act in the bad times and how they cope and how you guys work together. And that's the part where he just crumbled and became a monster that was not worth the good times. Can you do a video on what he's doing now and how he feels about you now? Um, no, I don't think I can do a video on that. Uh, I can post some snaps maybe of thing, you know, little how he's messaged me and what he, you know, feels, I think, I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll post some things. <clears throat> what did you go to school for? Did you finish? Where do you work now? So, um, I don't like talking about this one, especially for people that know that I've been in an abusive relationship because it's embarrassing, but I actually got a psychology degree. That just goes to prove that it can and does happen to anybody. So I have a minor in art, a bachelor's in psychology, and I was studying for my master's in psychotherapy. And unfortunately, I was a thesis short because I ran out of funding and I had to leave where I was studying. And I was already in school when I met Mike in case y'all wondering. And where do I work now? Uh, I work for the government and I make a good amount of money. It's decent. It's okay. We get by. And uh, things are good. And that's all that matters. <clears throat> Why didn't you call 911? I get that question so much. And I did many times. Half the time I couldn't get to the phone because he'd take it, so I'd record on my tablet. Um, other times he would break my phone. I went through so many phones. Uh, and the times I did call 911, they came over and he sweet-talked them. And they didn't do anything. So that was that. <clears throat> was he diagnosed? I believe he was. With what? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Shouldn't you focus on your children instead of dating? So let's uh, bring this back to abusive relationships and how isolation is a main form of control and manipulating that person into not telling anyone or reaching out or having an escape. I went through years of that. All right, I'm not going to isolate myself anymore. It's a personal preference, of course, but for me, I had been isolated and I had been told I can't have friends or go do anything. So you're darn right I'm going to go date and you're darn right I'm going to start having fun and enjoying my life again. Short story, I had a girlfriend where she was a really good friend of mine and he was like, I don't want you to be friends with her anymore. And I was like, I don't care that you don't want me to be friends with her. She's a good friend. I'm going to be friends with her. So as opposed to once he saw it wasn't working, controlling me to be friends with her, 
he went after her. And he started throwing mean things her way, threatening her, um, saying that I was sleeping with her boyfriend, and it was very sad. And I lost her as a friend, even though it wasn't my choice. And I didn't want to lose her as a friend, because she was a really good friend. So yeah, isolation days, those are over. Yeah, I'm going to get out, do things, hang out with friends, do whatever I want. It's awesome. Does he still try to stalk you and contact you? Yes. Yes, he does. They never let go of their grasp when they're that crazy. Uh, he tries to contact me quite regularly. Usually I'll go through a month or two with having beautiful peace. And then all of a sudden I'll turn on his social media and see that he tried to add me on Facebook or Instagram or whatever he could find and that I'd have to block him. Some of them he'd be able to get a message or two before I could hit block, but most of them I'd block before he would try to message me. <clears throat> How do you know when the time is right to start dating? Again, that's a personal preference. Some people are ready to date right out of the bat because they have been so over that relationship for such a long time, they feel like they've been broken up for years even though they couldn't actually get out of it. Other people, they need some recovery period. Um, some people really struggle with staying out of that abusive relationship. That's the biggest, hardest thing, is staying out of that abusive relationship because they are so manipulative and they just don't let go of you. So you do have to conquer that fact before you can bring somebody else into that drama. Um, but again, it's something that you know when you're ready and you'll take that step when you feel like it's right. And I know when it's kids, you have to be more cautious. I know I was, I was really scared, especially when it came to introducing him, but now he's just a part of the family. He's really well integrated with my family and you know, we go to all these social events, we go out, we have fun, um, he attends all of my family gatherings with no issues, and ah, it's just amazing. So yeah. How do you start dating with kids? That's difficult. So I couldn't do traditional going out and meeting people because I'm not really a bar scene, I don't really drink a party, you know. So. I tried online dating and it wasn't working very well because all the guys just kind of want to booty call you. It doesn't go too well. Uh, so I kind of created this criteria where they'd have to let me know a few weeks ahead of time so I could arrange a babysitter. And none of the guys were capable of doing that um, until I met my lovely man who arranged the date not only a month ahead of time, but every time that I was not able to do anything or go anywhere or have a date, but I had to like make a grocery store run, he'd go grocery shopping with me just to spend five minutes with me. Uh, he'd go for a quick cup of coffee, again, just to spend five minutes with me. As opposed to doing traditional dating, once we were established as a couple, comfortable, with each other, mainly me comfortable with him, um, we started doing family dates. And the girls adapted to him very well. He adapted to them very well. And they love him to death. Same for me. Uh, and <laughs> we're all pretty excited about our future. Is CPS involved? No. No, they are not, because I knew very well that if CPS found that I was in an abusive relationship and my children were in that situation, they would remove my children as opposed to removing the abusive person, Does that makes sense. So I did not share or post anything until I was out of that relationship. Aren't you ashamed you let this happen in front of your children? Yeah. I'm ashamed I was in an abusive relationship in the first place. I'm ashamed any of that happened. I'm ashamed that I had kids with a man that treated me that way. Yeah. I'm ashamed. 
However, I shouldn't be. Because at the end of the day, I'm not the bad person. He is. I tried my best, and I tried to leave, and I tried to get them out of it as quickly as I could and as safely as possible. And it's kind of hard to explain if you haven't been in it. But yes, I am ashamed. But I'm ashamed it happened, and I'm ashamed that he did all that. I'm not ashamed of what I did and how I got out. Biggest, biggest question. How do you find the finances to leave? I wish I had a good answer for that. Um, because that was my biggest issue. And I lucked out and I had a job that had transferability where I could move to another location once I'd been there for one year. So that was my goal, to stay with them for one year, then transfer out. And that's what I did. However, not all jobs have that capability, and I know not everyone can afford to just pack up and leave. Because every cent I saved for that year kept getting stolen, and I couldn't afford to drive to the location of my transfer. So it was very difficult, and I eventually just gave in and contacted my family and told them what was going on and what I was trying to do, and I asked for their help. And it was the hardest thing I had to do, but it was the only way I could financially afford it. Um, so I, I wish I had a good answer for this, but I don't. I just got really lucky. Once you leave, you still gotta feed your kids. They gotta eat. You can't just not have money to feed your children. So, yeah. I wish I knew how to answer that one. Um, but hey, if people have methods or comments about that, comment below. I'll make a video of it. Relationship or know about somebody in an abusive relationship. <laughs> and dig into it. Alright, where's a good one? Okay. Okay. People that do this make it look so easy. We're gonna celebrate, not celebrate. We're gonna discuss. We're gonna talk about. We're gonna get depressed together. Uh, no, I can't do that. Frequently asked questions. So, um, hmm. 